All right, Kev, here we go. I know you are hyped for this one. Spawning in the top left-hand corner of Belshir Vestige, representing Team Axiom, the blue Protoss player. His name is Crank. Beautiful blue probes, man. Beautiful blue probes mining those beautiful blue minerals. You know, Crank playing in blue, representing the blue jersey of Axiom. But of course, man, the color of China. That's right. The color of China, indeed. Down in the bottom right-hand corner of Belshir Vestige, the red Protoss player. Red, the color of his opponent's blood. It is Invictus Gaming's gym. Look at that. That's the face of a stone-cold killer. The face oh. of an assassin. <laughs> Only 17 years old. This is also the very first time Jim has ever made it outside of China. He has never uh, traveled outside of China, obviously never participated in any tournaments. Uh, he did play WCG, as I mentioned before, but that was held in China. So this is the very first time, man. And of course, we love to hype up Jim, and we like to think that he is by far the best thing that has ever happened to any Protoss player. That he's like a mixture between the old MC and the new Reign. You know, if those two put all the force together, we, we get Jim. But he might be really nervous as well, you know. This is, it's been a long journey for him. He's only 17 years old. How much pressure can we really put on his shoulders? Uh, well, you know, he has performed up to that standard thus far. And, and you know what? Win or lose, Jim is uh, just a, an absolute hero in my book. And uh, I cannot wait to see his games. If for no other reason than the fact that he was so incredibly dominant in the round of 32. It just looked so easy. I am... Delighted at the prospect of him moving on to the top eight, where he, w where he would potentially be joining his teammate Max Ed. Yep. If we go through the history books, though, we can see that Jim has struggled perhaps a little bit in PvP. I'd say the majority of the time, Max Ed has had the better hand of Jim. Uh, once again, I do think that Jim has become a lot better in the last three, four, five months. Um, according to the internal rankings in IG, people do think in general that Jim is the best player of Invictus Gaming as well. But what the coach said, Edison, and I think that's pretty smart, he said Jim has the best mechanics and he might be the best player, but Maxhead is really, really smart. And Jim sometimes doesn't see the opportunities that Maxhead sees. Yeah, it would definitely be Jim proper to not give Maxhead some credit because Edison was said that in practice, it's often Maxhead who's beating Jim. And, uh, you know, Max said with a great performance yesterday, uh, he is poised to go very deep in this WCS. So what kind of styles are we going to see from both players? Ben, we're going to see that Jim is going to work on the Sentry. So he opens up Sentry Mothership Core. Um, might go for a one-gate fast expand after this, but normally you do get a Zello there as well, because going straight for the Sentry. It's a little bit surprising. No, we can already see him getting a oh, Twilight wow. Cons in the back of his base. He might have taken a note out of Maxet's play. Maybe the Chinese players really love Dark Templars, Ben. Could be. Jim... Uh, potentially getting sneaky, also making a stalker. He's gone Sentry uh, Stalker, Mothership Core. Not necessarily in that order, because the Mothership Core is already out. Mm -hmm. And we see, the, of course, the Nexus going down on the other side of the map for Crank. This has become a very, very popular build. If you haven't watched PvP in the last five months, which is almost impossible, because if you watch Pro League or if you watch WCS Europe, you're going to see a lot of them. And mm -hmm. this is only the beginning, I feel, with six out of eight Protoses in... Uh, he has a round of eight. You're going to see that this build has become really popular. It's very safe, but there are definitely some answers to it as well. Uh, we can already see that Crank dropping the robotics facility will most likely open up with an immortal, maybe even two, and then squeeze out an observer. But often you see one immortal and then the observer. But then, of course, Ben, is he going to send that observer across the map? Will he look at his ramp? Is he going to be able to drop the force yeah. field in time? These are all questions which will be answered within two minutes. So now. many factors to consider here as we see that dark shrine finishing up. And uh, the question of the gym mortals is a good one. How many will Crank build? What will he do with him? Will he actually make any at all? Jim does have a pylon down on Crank's half of the map already. Yeah, if you go for this build, you don't really want to run around too much because you don't really have a lot of units and sentries are kind of slow. So you don't really want to send a sentry to this side of the map. It's just way too risky that one of them gets picked up by a couple of uh, stalkers. Uh, uh, Even oh though no, that wouldn't bro. be the case. Uh, this is a good little scout indeed by Crank. We can see over here on the south side of the map, he is going to find his Nexus. But I actually think this is kind of good for Jim, even though I'm pretty damn sure that um, Crank has played against uh -oh. DT build so many times that uh -oh. he's still uh, aware of the fact that it's completely possible that his opponent is indeed going for Dark Templars. Kev, I'm very worried for Crank already. His observer halfway across the map. He is not building a second observer. Oh, he's sending it back, man. Oh, he saw something, or he sensed something, or he felt something. Maybe yep. he saw the shimmer of that Dark Templar. 
Is he watching? Looks like Correct. no, he's oh, not. There's a DT in the main, and already this is good news for Jim. Yep, if he kills five to six probes, this has been completely worth it for him already. There we go, two kills so far. Crank is pulling the probes away right now, so four probes down, maybe even five, and a little bit of mining time lost as well. I think it's safe to say, Ben, with this expand going up right behind this, that Jim is quite pleased with how this is yeah, going. Jim very happy to see uh, how it's all gone down. Crank with a hallucinated phoenix up in the main base, or up in Jim's main base, able to see... Oh, there, there's that dark shrine that uh, that you managed to get down. DT will. He's trying so hard to get away, but he's not going to get out of there. It's the wrong it up. <laughs> so uh, what does that do to the state of things? Well, on the worker tab, it's 35 probes to 36. So uh, even-ish, if we if we consider the tech, it's Robo Tech down for Crank with his first forge on the way. There is uh, a Robo also down for Jim. He's uh, also, of course, got that Dark Shrine that we talked about. No forges, no upgrades coming for Jim just yet. Uh, Crank actually still being three workers ahead. Well, he lost four workers. I thought he was going to lose five to six. So only four is pretty good. The Warp Prism is still here, though. This could be very annoying if we're going to see a Dark Templar drop. And you know what's becoming more and more popular in PvP? Storm drops. And I think that's really cool. I have to admit, the other week I was playing a game on Leather. And I was playing this game. I was kind of behind, you know, but I didn't just want to quit. I played against this Protoss, which was just better than me. And then he started doing storm drops all over the map, which I felt was kind of embarrassing, you know. I'm playing a PvP. So I got kind of bitter about it. But the the more I thought about it, the more I, th I realized, like, hey, this is actually just really good what this guy is doing, and I shouldn't be, you know, a whiny little girl about it. This guy's just not playing me. And we saw it today as well on WCS Europe. Uh, we might actually see it again this time, man. Jim going to try to pick off this building cannon. He might actually succeed in that endeavor, at least forces a cancel, but ultimately that DT does uh, no real damage, so he's just going to back off. Oh, at the same time, there was a second DT in the natural, and that did pick up three probe kills. So Jim continuing to be very, very annoying. Yeah, and above all, Crank is losing a lot of mining time right now. We can see it in the income tab as well. He's going to have to transfer workers, uh, transfer workers once more. Still has way too many probes in his main base. I hope he's going to realize this. Okay, he's going to realize this right now. But still, right now, it throws him off a little bit. Only one out of three probes on this yeah. simulator. Yeah, uh, so he's not mining gas optimally. DT still being annoying in the main base, and he's going to get a couple more probe kills. Whoa, nope, he's not. Crank doing a great job of pulling back just in the nick of time. This DT is going to... Essentially be sacked. He's going to attack this pylon. In the natural, though, another Dark Templar, and it does pick up a few more kills. How many kills, Roddy? Uh, not too many. Uh, Crank was on top of this, but in total, nine workers have gone down, so I guess two more additional workers. This DT in the main base did kill a pylon, though. Now I actually feel that DC, these DTs are really starting to pay for themselves. We also see six additional gates going down. Ooh, we know that, that Max said loves the double robo colossus. You know, I'm just going to sit back and make a lot of colossus because colossus are really good in PvP. Jim seems to have a different style, man. Yeah, he is following this up with heavy, heavy commitment to the gateways. And you know what? I'm not sure how I feel about it. It, it could be as simple as make a couple Archons and go. He's and researching charts as well. Uh, he doesn't have Blink. Of course, Blink not that important anymore. If the Immortal count goes up, we see a lot of additional gates going down for Crank as well. I really felt that Jim was putting himself in a position where he could say, like, hey, you know what? I'm going to drop the Robo Bay. I'm going to get a couple of Colossus because I'm still a Colossus believer. But, you know, I might be old school. I might be outdated. Uh, we've seen it today as well. It's just really a preference thing these days. I don't think it's safe to say that one star is necessarily better than the others. It's just what do you feel more confident in and what do you believe in? Now, Crank did scout the main base with that hallucinated phoenix. He saw all those extra gateways, so yeah. there's no telling what that does to his thinking. Jim got to morph, uh, morph some Archons on his side uh, of the map. Uh, Jim is not building probes anymore either, Ben. He's up 48 probes right now, and that's what he's been at for a while. Plus two. He did just start plus two, but Charge is ready. He has a couple of Archons. Jim is going to put himself, in my opinion, in an uncomfortable oh, position. Man. Sure, he might be able to deal a ridiculous amount of damage. Is there still a Mothership Core for Crank? Uh, yes, there is. Where is it? Okay, it's just hovering around over here, trying to spot a Warp Prism. That makes sense. Oh, Crank is Jim has to deal so much army. damage. Crank has no idea that this army is out on the map, Kevin. So somehow Jim has managed to sneak across. Oh. Crank is out of position. The question is, uh, for how long... And it looks like he's already moving back towards his natural. That's where that attack's going to come from. Jim is poised. I love those Archons from Crank, Ben. Archons are going to be really, really good against this heavy Zealot count from Jim. Right now it's only 12, but I'm pretty sure the next weapon is going to be a Zealot weapon as well. This is a really scary army, but it's... He's up 13 army supply. I guess one more warp in. Okay, it's going to be like around 20. How good is Photon Overcharge? It's going to all come down to how good Photon Overcharge is. Here comes Jim dancing around the outside of the also. natural. Has not committed to the attack yet. Wants that next warp in. Also, Ben, plus two already ready for Crank. Plus two not ready yet for Jim. A time warp and a Photon Overcharge. No, there's no energy for that. There's only going to be one Photon Overcharge. Uh, but, uh, time, or, I'm sorry, plus two is not going to be ready for Jim. There's the Photon Overcharge that we were talking about. Jim is... 
Yeah, know. I guess he's going to commit for it. So this is a really dangerous attack here from Jim. Couple force fields, not going to do much of anything. Uh, zealots of Crank are dying very quickly to the focus fire of the Archons, but that photon overcharge is just constantly hammering away at this army. I don't know if this attack's going to work. Jim is still up oh. in supply. I think it is, man. I love the war prism as well. Zealots coming in from the left side. Photon overcharge, of course, takes a little while to kill an Archon. These Immortals are all still alive. Jim, why are you the one with full HP Immortals? Jim needs to warp in, and he is going to warp in. Archon's going to try to do something about it, but that War Prism's not going to go down very quickly. Zealot Warp in does finish. Jim hammers away at the Immortals of Crank. The Photon Overcharge still doing work. Four kills on that Nexus already. Probes have been pulled. It's 88 supply to 50, and Kevin, I think it worked. I think it worked indeed. This pilot is going to fall. Other pilots are going to fall. That's not too bad for Crank, but his entire army is dead, and that 